Hi everybody. I don't really know where to begin here. There was a terrible crime committed last week. It's easier to talk about when you don't have any connection to the people involved. But my friend and fellow activist Eva Marie was brutally murdered exactly one week ago. We were both active in RFSU, the Swedish branch of International Planned Parenthood Federation, but I was active in Gaffenburg, Sheen, Westeros, so we didn't meet all that often. We bumped into each other at the Pride Festivals, talked a lot at the last Congress, and stayed in touch on Facebook and Skype. This is hard enough for people like me who know her a bit, but it's so far, far worse for her family and close friends, and especially her children. And in my opinion, it's even worse for her. That's a philosophical issue that I'm not going to get into here. But I do think that robbing someone of all the years to come that is horrible, not just on principle and for the people who survive, but it She deserved those years. She was quite young. She would have lived so much longer and there was so much she would have done with her life. What it all comes down to is prejudice and bigotry. And that's, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video and in videos to come. Eva Marie and her murderer, they had for many years been locked in a brutal custody struggle and the murderer kept insisting over the years that a sex worker cannot be a good mother. This was the sexual politics that he was fighting, while well, she was fighting the opposite struggle, that yes, a sex worker can be a good mother, a good parent, you shouldn't be judged for what you work with. I don't know the murderer personally and I don't want to know him. I don't know to what extent his political stance was a calculated move to get custody and to what extent it was a deeply held belief. In either case, he did live in a society and he still lives in a society. Unlike her, he still, he still lives her. But they both lived in a society where hatred against women is quite rampant, but it's not socially accepted anymore. But bigotry and prejudice against sex workers, that is not only rampant, but it is institutionalized. It is official policy. We are all supposed to have these strong, negative, real insulting stereotypes against all sex workers. We as a culture are supposed to monetize them, treat them not, not as individual human beings, but as if they were one big monolith. I've been a bit interested in these issues over the years. I think society's position is so absurd and I find that very interesting. Plus I have met some sex workers and their stories are really worth listening to. 
I think for me personally, the whole thing really got started a few years ago when I attended a panel discussion about sex work. And the very headline was something about the happy hooker, something about whether the hooker is happy or not. Like, excuse me, individuals? I, you're... During the questions and answers section, I raised my hand and said that I think it's terrible that this title is used. I mean, I think it's very good that we can't ask that kind of questions about use or people of color anymore. I mean, ugh, I don't even want to take that kind of words in my mouth, but... I mean, if someone would ask whether or not the Jew is greedy and whether or not the Negro likes to dance, we would all <clears throat> recognize this for the prejudice and bigotry that it is. But when it comes to sex workers, we are instead supposed to have these awful stereotypes. If we don't express the stereotypes, we are immediately accused of believing in the myth of the happy hooker, or being sex workers, or pimps, or johns ourselves. It's totally absurd. But there were other people who raised their hands at that meeting as well. One of them was a woman who identified herself as a sex worker, and she said that she didn't recognize at all the image painted of her and her sisters by certain people on the panel. She felt that she respected her clients and they respected her. It was a mutual agreement that they were okay with all of them and she didn't feel victimized in any way, shape or form. And their reaction, as I remember it, like, ah, we would like to know your social security number. We need to see if you have any children we can take away from you. And this is the core of the Swedish model. We have two awful laws and an awful mindset accompanying these laws. A mindset where a sex worker can, by definition, not think for herself or be responsible for herself. She's by definition a poor little victim that you are supposed to look down upon with pity and pat on the head and tell her what to think and believe. And this was a huge part of the custody battle that Eva Marie was fa facing as well. And the guy actually got sole custody. He was convicted of various crimes, including violence. He had restraining orders for various women because he had beat them up and so on. But the local authorities assumed that there was no threat at all against Eva Marie. And they gave that guy sole custody on the basis that he had kidnapped the children. The logic being that, oh, since he has kidnapped them, made sure that they can't meet their mother, they don't have any relationship with their mother, and therefore he is more fit to be the custody parent. But now Eva Marie was going to meet the children at last and she was so happy about that. She was going to see them with the help of a social worker. And this guy didn't like that at all. He killed Eva Marie in cold blood and he almost killed the social worker as well. The hospital managed to save her after all but well it was very brave of her to try to step in and save Eva Marie. I wish it had succeeded, but 
Well, big strong knife, big strong guy with a knife. There's not really much stopping that. We have the the basic thing here about the attitude to violence against sex workers. We all know that sex workers are often targeted for various violence. We're talking about systemic rape, beating and murder. When this happens to gay people or people of color, we call it hate crimes and rightly so. We recognize that the category of people are being targeted and that it's not okay to target people for rape, beating, exploitation or murder. However, in the case of sex workers, society often put the blame on the victim. Just a few days before the murder, I watched a speech by an expert who said that in American police they have this acronym for when sex workers get murdered. They call it NHI, No Humans Involved. In Sweden, we do recognize as a culture that sex worker that sex workers are people in that regard that it's not okay to murder them and that's a step forward i guess but we still as a culture put the blame on the victim to a very large degree we make it a matter of her being a sex worker rather than him hating sex workers and of course i don't know if this particular guy had any hatred against sex workers as a group, as long as they're not mothers. And like I said, he might have faked his hatred for sex worker mothers as a strategic tool, but in either case, he was fighting for prejudice and bigotry against sex workers who are mothers and then he murdered a sex worker who is a mother and of course he's going to argue that oh this was just a mistake and it was her fault anyway of course he's going to argue that we'll never know for sure whether or not the murder was premediated but as one of our mutual friends has pointed out Swedish mass media has lately been full of reports about fathers who murder the mothers of their mutual children to get the custody and do get the custody for that because it's considered to be in the child's best interest to be with the one remaining parent even if this parent murdered the other parent for this exact reason. There has been a lot of critique against this lately and I for one do not think that this is generally in the best interest of the child apart from the other moral considerations but in either case we're talking about the guy who knew that society had this hatred against his victim. We will never know for sure how much it affected him personally, but we do know that it does affect a lot of people. People get hurt needlessly, trampled in various ways. Regardless of how good or bad Mother Eva Marie really was, she has been through hell in all kinds of undeserved ways, with authorities blaming her for being a sex worker, saying all kinds of horrible things about her. By the way, Eva Marie, or 
Yasmin, as she also called him, called herself. She was not only active in RFSU, but she was also a board member of Rose Alliance, the Swedish Organization for Sex Workers. And this thing with custody that this was her major struggle, not just for herself, but for everyone. Not just about her getting custody, but about everyone getting a fair chance that you shouldn't be judged for, for your occupation. You need to be judged as an individual on your merits of laws. But there have been so much bias on many levels. And of course, every level of the system will claim to not be biased. And they might even claim that her line of work didn't even affect the outcome or the analysis they made, including the very flawed analysis that there was no threat against her. Of course there was a threat against her. Come on. In hindsight, it's very obvious, and I know that hindsight vision is always 2020, but still. Yeah. I'm going to talk more about the Swedish model in future videos. Like I said, I've been critical about it for a long time. I would, however, like to point out that it's a huge upgrade compared to systems that criminalize the sex worker. The Swedish model only criminalizes sex workers for living together or having a life or trying to help each other it doesn't criminalize them for being sex workers it does criminalize their clients so there's still a lot of room for extortion and ruining their, their lives and disqualify them from being counted as real adult human beings But it's still better than the systems where you lock up the sex workers and actively punish them for being sex workers. So this whole thing that the government is trying to do with exporting the Swedish model, if they do it to those countries, I'm on board with it. But sadly it seems to be more about making the situation for sex workers even worse by bring it up in countries where it isn't criminalized. Yeah. Um, I really want to go at the memorial tomorrow. But it's on the other end of the country, so I think I'll probably have to settle because I'm silent man not here in Gothenburg. We'll see. Swedish sex workers get mistreated and discriminated and penalized in all kinds of ways all the time. This thing with losing your children simply for being a sex worker, that seems to be rather common. And even when it doesn't actually happen, it's still a threat hanging over the woman's head. I'm only talking about female sex workers, by the way, because although male sex workers are rather common, they don't have this spotlight on them. They don't get pushed down like the female sex workers does, as far as I know when it comes to society and so on. 
But anyway, my point here is that all these mistreated and in some case some cases murdered sex workers nobody beyond the immediate family cares and often the family doesn't even know because it's so it is so socially stigmatized so the woman don't even dare to tell her family what she works with she has to go through all these horrors with discrimination and bigotry and prejudice and so on alone. Eva Marie or Jasmine, if you want to call her that, it's a very different case. I'm very glad that she did go public. I mean, she did keep her name secret when she talked as a sex worker. She used the name Jasmine in Rose Alliance and the name Eva Marie in RFSU, where she talked as an activist in general, not as a sex worker. And of course, she wasn't ashamed. It's not about that. It was to protect her children. And it's horrible that someone must do that. But still she did dare to speak up and this will make people remember her if she had been just another silent victim it wouldn't have changed anything but i hope this case will get some people to realize that this system is wrong we need to start seeing sex workers as individuals as equals not as some dirt little thing to spit on and or pat on the head we must stop pretending that they are some kind of wounded animals that we can adopt against their will and with we i mean the society Well, one case is a tragedy, a million cases is only a statistic. But Eva Marie's death was that one case that I hope will make people open their eyes. It has certainly made me open my eyes quite a bit. I mean, I already knew all this in theory. I have heard about even this particular case for many years. And I wasn't even surprised when he murdered her. I mean, it was so the logical conclusion of this whole affair. But it hit close to home in a very different way than it's done before. I mean, this is goddamn serious. And society can't, can't afford to accept this bigotry anymore. This no. Well, I think I'm going to make more videos about this in the future. However, I'm probably not going to release the last video I did because I did make one video quite shortly after the murder, but it sucked in two ways. First of all, the technical issues because I actually got the news one hour after I left Gothenburg for a one week trip up to the northern mountains so called fjällvandring so I've been walking around in the mountains and had a lot of time to think about life and <laughs> death and meaning and such I did make this one video on my smartphone and I think the technical quality sucks but I was also quite upset at the time and I think the video was even more rambling than this one. So this will have to be everything for now. But let's not forget, okay? Live long and prosper.